Hey everybody! So I was not planning on making a post today, but I was um, involved in a conversation earlier where something was said that really got me to thinking about my whole journey with um, the weight loss doing the vegan low carb keto style and why it was so easy for me because I've been on kind of like this little research kick for a few weeks now, um, but really seriously these last few weeks because I want to know why it's so easy for me to stick to what I'm doing and why it's been so easy and why I've had a steady weight loss all the way down the hill, which doesn't mean I haven't had a couple of plateaus or stalls because I have, but I, I haven't had any regain resurgences. I've managed to just keep going down. And a lot of people talk often about how they um, fell off and they have to get back started again. They can't find the motivation to restart and that kind of stuff. And <clears throat> excuse me, it's really bothered me because I was thinking, what what's missing what am I missing in telling them showing them sharing with them I've showed everybody exactly how I eat so many times and you know it's very simple I've showed everybody that that's in writing that's we've got that all posted in the groups and stuff everybody knows how to do that part because I see the, play, the pictures of their place and stuff they know how to do that part I see that um mostly <laughs> um most most of them do so what was missing what was missing right and so First of all, I was sitting down and I was writing down all the things because I was going through my journals and my notes and stuff and I was writing down er everything that seemed like it was a thing that was helping me lose weight, I put over to the side. So here's a list and in, no, in no specific order, I'm just going to give you a list of things that I was doing while I was losing the weight in, in the process of losing the most of the weight, the things that were helping me the most, okay? One of them was I was staying busy and okay, so maybe maybe you're thinking to yourself, I'm always busy, what are you talking about? Now, okay, so let me give you an example. When I quit smoking cigarettes, I had 300 something extra minutes a day because it would take me approximately 10 minutes to smoke a cigarette. I smoked so many cigarettes that, you know, seriously, I, I blew 300 minutes a day. So when I first quit smoking, I had a lot of extra time on my hands that I had to fill doing other things. Now, I've been quit for 14, 15 years. If I tried to smoke now, I wouldn't be able to fit it in. I wouldn't have that time because I filled in all those extra minutes, right? Okay, so most people have minutes that they use eating all the time. Okay, so if I would have took out my 300 minutes a day for smoking and then probably my, I don't even know how many minutes a day I took out, sneaking food, hiding to eat, eating when nobody was around, um, waiting for times when I could eat when people couldn't see me eat because I, I was very much a, a, a hiding eater. People that never had any idea how much food I eat, they, they just didn't, they just didn't. Um, everything from, from giant two pound bags of M&Ms in the drawer beside my desk, they just had no clue. I had drawerfuls of stuff in my bedroom. <clears throat> I had a lot of food around <laughs> and I ate steadily. You know, now for people who, who who don't know I was doing that and stuff, you know, that, that, that might even come as a little bit of a shock. But anyway, so when I say stay busy, fill up the times, the minutes that you would have spent looking for food, finding food, preparing food, eating food. Okay. You have to keep you have to fill those minutes up. You have to find something to fill those minutes up. The very first few um, weeks, I noticed a pattern that I was like, every day I was cleaning out drawers. I was cleaning out closets. I was going through all my clothes. Um, I was going through stuff, getting rid of stuff, um, kind of downsizing and just, you know, just going through things. Um, that that seemed like that filled my first few weeks pretty well. And then, then as a few months got, got on, I was doing things like, you know, deep cleaning things and then going through things again. And then I started this little habit of um, trying on every single piece of clothes I had. And I had a lot of clothes. It would take me a few hours to do this. Almost once a week, once, twice a week sometimes, because I was losing weight so rapidly that I was like shrinking out of my clothes pretty rapidly, right? So I would always have a pile of clothes I'm getting rid of that were too big. The pile of clothes that I was fitting into and then a, a, a smaller pile that I knew I was heading towards. Because at the time, I was just going to the thrift stores, and if I was a size 18, I would buy 16s. If I was a 16, I bought 14s, 14s, 12s, blah, blah, blah. Like right now in my closet, I have fours. <laughs> Guess what I'm heading for, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm in eights, and they're really comfortable. I am probably could try a six. I just haven't done it yet. But I, I got a couple of pairs of fours given to me that I refuse to get rid of. Anyway, back to the purpose of this. So stay busy. You need to find things to do. You need to find things that will keep you motivated. And, and to me, trying on all the clothes in my closet kept me very motivated. You know, that was just really, that was a thing for me. And to this day, I still like to try on whatever outfit I'm wearing every single day. I love the fact that I can button my pants. I just said today in a post that I made in our group, I said, it's such a pleasure 
but it's also such a surprise to be able to zip them, to pull on a pair of pants, they slide right up, they close right up, and they zip and button because, come on, when, when you're two, three hundred pounds, you don't wear pants that zip and button. I didn't ever buy any of those big jeans. And I had a pair of, I did have a pair of jeans that somebody gave me that I look at now and I hold them out. I go, oh my God, what the hell? You know, but um, yeah, I, I've been there, been there, done that. Um, so anyway, find something to do. Stay busy was number one for me. Um, okay. I got number two and this is one that probably should have been down the list. It was eat smaller for every 10 pounds you lose. I have a, a saying that small people eat small, right? Because I watched them my whole life. And I've said this many times. If you watch small people, they don't eat a lot. That's why they're small. You know, there is every once in a while you get that small person that out eats everybody. But most small people eat small. That's, that's just, it makes sense. That's why they're small, okay? So for every 10 pounds I lost, this is how I did it. You can do it however, however you need to. If you want to track it and so you don't have any calories to cut every 10 pounds or whatever, that's fine. I didn't want to do all that. So what I would do is I would fill my plate up to the same amount, like after I lost 10 pounds, and then I would just take off a scoop of the food. Like I would, I would tell myself, I don't know what's wrong with my, that hair today. Um, I would tell myself, okay, about that much. And, or I would leave it all by plate or whatever. Or I'd give it to my husband or give it to somebody or something. Uh, I just started taking it off. So every 10 pounds that I've lost or 20 pounds that I've lost, I've, I've made myself eat smaller and smaller. Um, and this kind of runs into the second one kind of only have one plate of food ever. If you didn't get enough, you're not going to die before your next meal. I promise. You know, only take one plate of food ever. Um, when you make your plate of food, especially when you're starting this and you're brand new to this, make half your plate like um, greens or broccoli or um, some kind of green low carb vegetable, right? And a lot of it, put like a half pound on there if you need to. I mean, whatever. And then make a little a quarter of your plate over here, a little third of your plate or, or just a little tiny section over here. Have that be your protein. You don't need a gob of protein. Have that be your protein, whatever it's going to be. And then a little bit of fats and you're good. You're good to go. Okay, so make it simple. Keep it simple, you guys. Really seriously, keep it simple. <clears throat> oh, I have, I have phone, find a friend that can be your phone a friend. Okay, so everybody needs somebody, right? We all need somebody. <clears throat> so have a phone a friend. I was lucky my husband is my phone a friend. When I'm, when I'm struggling or suffering, I call my husband. But I also have a few friends that I could call for phone a friend. So I think everybody needs a person like that. Join a group if you have to and use them as your phone or friend. Um, and I have stopped the sugar in capital letters with several exclamation marks because I'm telling you right now that if you do not get sugar out of your life as far as reason, reasonably possible, every once in a while you may get something that is a zero carb food but has one gram of sugar. I let that slide. I let that, I'll let one gram of sugar slide here or there. But mostly I check all my labels, which that's on here. Read all your labels because you're going to find out that there's sugar and things you never expected it to be in. You're going to find out that there's carbs and things you never expected to be in, like spices. Hello. You know, things like that. So please read your labels. Read your labels and try to stay as far away from sugar as you can. Because I'm going to tell you that once you've been off sugar long enough, you will forget that you ever even like sugar. You know, you just will. Okay, so if you're doing it, um, intermittent fasting which hopefully you are because intermittent fasting is really good for you. I mean, it's, it's just, it's amazing. I'm not going to go into it because it's too involved for me to want to go into details about right now. I don't talk as well as I used to since the stroke. So um, look it up if you need to, but hopefully you're doing the intermittent fasting. Um, you got to, you got to kind of plan for hunger during those hours, especially in the beginning. I forgot how hungry I was at first until I went and reread my, my journals, my notes. And so I thought, oh yeah, I was, I, I did had to, I did have to kind of, be tough with myself in the beginning because, yeah, um, I got hungry. When it wasn't my time to eat, I did, but I just found more things to do. I just stayed busy. Um, well, I, I, I don't know why that. Anyway, post weekly or daily pictures of yourself in a, in a group or to yourself or just keep them in a file on your, on your thing because you would be shocked how fast you'll start noticing changes and how much that'll kind of keep you on the train of success, you know, keep you on that wagon. Um, I see those pictures sometimes. I think, yeah, that's why I do that. I take a lot of pictures. I don't care what anybody says about me being a, you know, taking too many pictures or I keep taking the pictures because I feel like that by taking the pictures and posting them, more people can see them. It keeps me 
very mentally motivated to stay where I am, at least stay where I am or go lower to not let anybody see me regain that weight. I'm not going to let that happen. Everybody I see that falls off of your YouTube channels or group channels or whatever and, and regains massive amounts of weight is because they just disappeared. I'm not going to disappear. <laughs> I don't care if anybody ever watches my videos. I don't care if I have any kind of following ever, um, except that I would like to help people. But um, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to disappear because I'm not going to let myself go back to that ever, ever again. It's never going to happen again. Okay. Um, oh, you know, it's, start early building your lifestyle. Okay. Here's my thing. When I very first started losing the weight, I, I thought, okay, what are the things that I always thought I would want to be like or do if I was the weight I'd always wanted to be that I dreamed of? What was the difference in the life? that life than the life that I had now. And once I figured those things out, and I did, I made myself a list. It's a very personal list. I've got quite a long list of it though. Um, I started right away implementing the changes that I wanted to make. One of the changes that I've, I've made recently was my husband bought me a set of real pearl, pearls years and years ago, and I've never really worn them and I love them. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dress every day in a, in a, in a I'm going to be stylish. I'm going to wear my pearls and I'm going to, you know, feel good about it, you know? So start start building the lifestyle that you want to build for yourself someday. Do it immediately so that you're already kind of living that life as you get there. Uh, weigh yourself. Okay, no, I know. I know so many people have this love-hate um, relationship with the scales. We love them if they're going down. We hate them if they're not. Um, we hate them if they're climbing. We hate high numbers, right? But every single time ever, uh, any any other diet plan or, or anything I've ever done in my life, when I stop weighing, that's my first clue. What is it a clue of? It's a clue of I plan to cheat or I know I've gained some weight because I've cheated or I know things are going south. So start weighing yourself, whether it's weekly, monthly, or however you want to do it, but make, make a commitment to it and be consistent. Because if you cannot be consistent and you cannot commit to what you're trying to do here. You, I don't know what you're doing. You're just going up and down and up and down and up and down. Don't do that. That's no fun. Um, okay. So now that I've got all that covered, I want to tell you guys why I think the number one reason that this has been so easy for me and why I haven't fallen off and why I haven't cheated and why those things haven't really happened to me since I started fear. I think it's fear. Um, like I said, I was in a conversation today and something somebody said, that's what came struck me. And and I thought, wow, that's what the problem is for me. Because when I had my stroke, I almost died. And I learned after I had my stroke that I could still die, that it could still be what ends up killing me. Um, it was imperative that I get the weight off, that I take the stress off my body, lower my blood pressure, all these things, right? So when I first started, there's no way that I was really going to fall off and cheat because I was, was scared. I was scared to stay as big as I was. Um, and even when I got off enough that everybody's saying, oh yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, you're doing so much better now and stuff. I still was like, no, you know what? <laughs> if I'm going to commit to this and I'm going to make this lifestyle change, I'm taking it all away and I'm going to lose all the way. And I'm going to get down to where my body is supposed to be, where it's the most comfortable, where it's the best that it can possibly be moving forward. And I just never have wavered from that. That doesn't mean I don't get hungry. That doesn't mean I don't get tempted. That doesn't mean I don't want things sometimes. It just means that, that it's real easy for me to go, no, yeah, no. It's, not, it's not, not in alignment with what I'm choosing to have in my life. So, but I'm still going to say that's probably fear. Just saying. So, all right, that's it for me today. Um, I just felt like this was all my heart. I needed to share it with you guys. And I hope that it helps somebody. All right, talk to you soon. Bye.